Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I asked on Twitter if anyone wanted to hear what I thought about this series of Unfortunate Events Netflix show and the vast majority of you said yes. I have heard a lot of conflicting things about this show. I can see both ends of the spectrum. I can see why people hate it and I can also see why people fucking love it. Me, I actually liked it. I didn't mind it at all. I thought it was... I thought it was good. <laughs> I thought it was good. I'm guessing majority of the people who don't like it didn't like the way that the mood of the series has kind of shifted into a more family friendly, more upbeat kind of vibe, you know what I mean? The, the books are a lot more dark and gloomy and serious, whereas the show 100% is a lot more um, comedic, I guess. I don't have an issue with that though, because keep in mind that the show is targeted towards children. Yes, there will be like older viewers, but at the end of the day, 100% I understand why they had to make it um, more appealing to a younger audience. The reason I think I liked it so much is because I thought if I was watching this as an eight-year-old, I would fucking love this show. What do I like better, the show or the movie? There are definitely aspects of the show that are a lot better than the movie and definitely parts of the movie that are a lot better than the show. So if you haven't watched the show yet, go fucking watch the show before you watch this video. What are you doing? It's literally like eight episodes um, and then come back, okay? So each book is split into two parts and I really like that because it meant that they weren't gonna have to cut so much out like they had to do in the movie. The show is definitely a lot more faithful to the book series than the movie was. The first two episodes are about the bad beginning, which is the first book in the series. Now, right off the bat, the first thing I noticed was the theme song. When I first heard the theme song, not gonna lie, I hated it. I thought it just, what, what kind of, okay, what kind of lyrics is look away, look away, times a hundred? Let's talk about the orphans, okay? The Baudelaire orphans. Appearance wise, I think they were perfect. They were spot on. This is what the actors in the show look like. And they're just so, so much better than the movies ones. Klaus actually has glasses this time. In terms of like how well they act. I mean, in the beginning, the very first couple of shots, they came across as really fucking pretentious. They felt at times very um, rehearsed. Like they were just reciting their lines and not like actually acting the lines. That doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean. With Count Olaf, I couldn't really get past the fact that it was just Barney Stinson. It bothered me for like the first half of the show and then I got over it. Otherwise, I think he did a really good job. I think his appearance was perfect for the role. I know a lot of people were saying that like, oh, he was too upbeat. Have you seen Jim Carrey's Count Olaf? I think Jim Carrey's portrayal of Count Olaf was a lot more comedic and like family friendly and upbeat. Um, Neil Patrick Harris's wasn't as much. As for the set, I really liked how exaggerated the houses were. I uh, Just the contrast between Count Olaf's house and Justice Strauss's house. I really liked the way it was filmed and the way the sets looked and the costumes. Even though it was a bit like fake looking, it looked really weird and I loved that. I think it suited the show Perfectly. Another thing that I really liked is how faithful it was to the books. I know in the movie they changed the ending of The Bad Beginning and the show did it perfectly. I think Mr. Poe was really well done. I think I liked him better than the movie's Mr. Poe. I forgot how much of a fucking bitch Mr. Poe's wife is. Yeah, I really liked him and I really liked his office. As for the theatre troupe, I hated them. <laughs> I hated them so much. Girl, why were they so goofy? Like, in the books they're supposed to be like scary and sinister and like they just made them too goofy, too family friendly and they just did not, it just didn't work for me at all. I really, really hated them. I think the actors that they chose didn't fit the roles at all. I hated how the hook-handed guy was just like a comedic relief character and he just turned into like the goofy sidekick. No! That made me sad, okay? I think it's great that the show included more people of color instead of whitewashing the fuck out of it like the movie did with Mr. Poe and Uncle Monty and Aunt Josephine, the hook-handed guy, all people of color. Thank you for adding some diversity into the fucking show. I think that's pretty much everything about the first book. So we'll move on to the second one, which was The Reptile Room. The first three books looked very similar, like the sets and everything looked very similar to 
the sets in, in the movie. And I'm sure this goes for a lot of people, not just me, but after I saw the movie, I started associating like those three books with how it was in the movie. You know what I mean? Like I pe started picturing the reptile room as the way the movie did it. I think it was clever that this, the Netflix show decided to replicate those first three sets to look like the movie sets. Done really well. I really like the house. I really like the garden. But talking about Uncle Monty, <laughs> what the fuck kind of mustache is that? Who, <laughs> who thought this was a good idea? I'm sorry, but if you have this kind of facial hair, reevaluate everything. His mustache was fucking stupid, okay? <laughs> Pretty much the only thing that I can think of about Uncle Monty. Now, as for Stefano, I don't understand how nobody caught on that, like, he was wearing a disguise because how the fuck could you not figure out that this person is wearing a disguise? I mean, although the show's version is really ridiculous, <laughs> To be fair, it was accurate to the books. In the book, Stefano is described as having a bald head and a long ass beard with like no eyebrows and like big goofy glasses. Whereas the movie took a more like realistic approach. The movie just gave him like a creepy ass mustache and like a fucked up comb over head. <laughs> and Neil Patrick Harris's Stefano is a lot more goofy, definitely. When the snake bites the kid on the face, in the movie, they actually like CGI'd it Biting the kid's face, but in the show they just kind of had the snake like Go at the camera and then it like went black and I think that was a good idea be Because it really eliminated a lot of room for error Another thing I really liked about the reptile room was I really liked seeing the movie theater scene That was something that I think they had to cut out of the movie the third book they adapted is the wide window Aunt Josephine I like Meryl Streep's portrayal so much better. I think new Aunt Josephine wasn't believable. Um, Aunt Josephine is supposed to be so nervy and skittish that she literally gets afraid of her own reflection. I think Meryl Streep's Aunt Josephine was so well done that like, I would have believed her if she got afraid of her own reflection. But I feel like in the show, when she got scared by her own reflection, it wasn't believable, it felt really forced. As for the house, I think the house is perfect, okay? I think the set for the house, it really did look rickety and unstable, actually looked cold. Aunt Josephine's house is supposed to be freezing cold because she's too afraid to use her heater and too afraid to turn the gas on. And the house felt like it was cold and damp and gloomy and um, I don't know. I guess it was the lighting. I think Captain Sham was my least favorite. His costume was really good, and I mean, his face looked fucked up and his teeth were gross, but <laughs> I think his costume was spot on. I didn't like his, his weird accent thing that he put on. That one really felt like Barney Stinson in like a costume. It really just felt like Barney Stinson had just walked into the series of unfortunate events and it was just not. One of the things that got cut out of the movie that they put in the show at that, that clown restaurant where the guy finds out that they're allergic to peppermints so that he can get them out of the restaurant so they can go like, so they can go back home. Okay, the hurricane scene, that was just the worst. <laughs> I hated that so much. It was so, it was just too much. It was really, really fake and it was so over the top and like ridiculous so CGI and like so fake. Oh my god, it was just horrible. It was just horrible. It was a mess. <laughs> it was a mess. It was very poorly executed. Moving on to the fourth one, which was The Miserable Mill. This was the one that didn't get adapted in the movie. That was one of my favorites in the series. The town was not anything like I expected it to look. I think that, again, the set and just the town itself looked so fucking good. I really liked the sawmill itself, the lumber mill. How there was just sawdust literally everywhere, just covering everyone head to toe. Um, just like how it said in the book. Oh, they did it so well. And the gum was like so clever. Uh, I really liked their uniforms as well. Oh, I really liked Mr. Sir. I think it was such a good idea that they didn't try to replicate the smoke cloud that's always around his head. In the book, you're not even supposed to see his face because there's just a cloud of smoke around it at all times because he smokes cigars so much. And I'm so happy that they didn't try to CGI smoke over his face or anything like that. I feel like that would have been way too hard to pull off. So I'm happy they didn't even attempt it. They just had him with like a fat ass cigar hanging out of his mouth. And I think that worked fine. As for Georgina Orwell, I was wondering how they were gonna do that. And I don't think there was any easy way to like 
put Neil Patrick Harris in like a, a woman's costume, make it not ridiculous. So I mean, you have to kind of cut them some slack in that respect. Clever that they turned her into more of like a comedic role. I don't think they would have been able to get away with that costume and that character if they didn't turn her into a bit of a joke. So that's why I don't really have a problem. The quagmire parents. The whole time that the show tries to make you believe that like the parents are the Baudelaire parents, like they're still alive. I was so upset and disappointed when I saw that they were trying to like make that a thing. But then it's like a plot twist and like they're actually the Quagmire parents, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and I'm glad we got to see like a preview of the Quagmire family before the next season, I guess, because they are a big part of the series. But I just hated the way that they like tried to do some sneaky, like trick everyone. I mean, they did trick me, but like, Fuck off. Wasn't a fan of that. I think that's it. I think that's it. I will say I'm very excited for season two. I can't wait for it to come out. I know that they're already writing a script for it. I did like this show, okay? I, I thought it was good. I thought it was well done. I mean, it sucks that there are a lot of fans who are disappointed. I mean, I don't really care about a lot of the changes that they had to make. I can live with them. Um, the fact that my favorite childhood series and a series that was so important to me. The fact that they turned it into a show and I'm not like crying over how bad it was. I'm fine with that. Those are pretty much my thoughts on the show. If you've read the series and you also watch the show, let me know if you thought they did a good job or not and whether you were happy with the adaptation or not. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.